Welcome everyone to the Apotheki Tales, the basics of pharmacology. So in this video, we're going to talk about a simple section that is the graded dose-response relation. So this is coming under the dose-response relationships. So we know that when a particular amount of dose is given, a particular magnitude of the response is produced. So we're going to learn about that in this video. So agonists are usually the drugs that will mimic the action of the original endogenous ligand for the receptor. For instance, uh, the phenylephrine that acts on the alpha-1 receptors. So when you talk about the magnitude of the drug effect produced, it usually depends on the drug concentration at the receptor site, which in turn is usually determined by both the dose of the drug administered and by the pharmacokinetic profile of the drug. So what is the different uh, factors or parameters coming under the pharmacokinetic kinetic profile. It includes the rate of absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. So therefore the amount of or the concentration of the drug at the receptor side basically determines the magnitude of the drug effect produced. So when you talk about the graded dose response relations, as the concentration of a drug increases, naturally its pharmacological effect also gradually increases until all the receptors are occupied. That means when all the receptors get occupied, that effect is producing the maximum effect is being produced. That means when we are trying to increase the dose of a drug or the concentration of the drug, what happens? The effect gradually increases and when all the receptors available gets occupied, it produces the maximum effect. So when you try to plot the magnitude of response against the increasing doses of a drug produces a graded dose response curve and this is usually a rectangular hyperbola curve which is usually similar to the diverse biological events uh, such as the enzymatic activity and the responses to the pharmacological agents. The two important properties of drugs are the potency and efficacy, which is usually determined using this graded dose response curve. So what is this potency? Potency is a measure of the amount of drug necessary to produce an effect of a given magnitude. So to determine this potency, one important parameter used is the EC50. So what is this EC50 now? It is the concentration of drug producing 50% of the maximum effect. So if you say that, we know that 100% is the full effect. So the concentration required to produce 50% of the maximum effect is basically known as the EC50. So if you observe in this graph, the EC50 for drug A and drug B is indicating that drug A is more potent than drug B. Why? Because a lesser amount of drug A is needed when compared to the drug B to obtain the 50% effect. So making it really simple, for instance, if the drug A at concentration 10 mg is producing the 50% response of the maximum response, whereas the drug B is producing the same 50% effect with a dose concentration of 20 mg. So that means naturally the drug A is more potent than the drug B because the drug A is producing the similar effect at a lower concentration. The therapeutic preparations also play a very important role in the potency. For example, the candisartan and irbisartan are angiotensin receptor blockers that is used to treat the hypertension. The therapeutic dose range for candisartan is 4 to 32 mg as compared to 75 to 300 mg for irbisartan. So that means a lower dose range is only required to produce the same effect as that of irbisartan, thereby the candisartan is more potent. Since the range of drug concentrations from 1% to 99% of the maximal response usually spans several orders of magnitude, semi-logarithmic plots are used so that the complete range of doses can be graphed. So that can be observed in the following graph. The sigmoidal curve is actually simplifying the interpretation of the dose response curve. Next, we're going to talk about the efficacy. So, what is this efficacy? Efficacy is the magnitude of response a drug causes when it interacts with the receptor. So, we know that a drug has to interact with the receptor to produce a response. So, the magnitude of response thereby produced by such an interaction is known as its efficacy. 
So efficacy is dependent on the number of drug receptor complexes formed and the intrinsic activity of the drug. That is the ability to activate the receptor and cause a cellular response. The maximal efficacy of drug that is Emax assumes that all receptors are occupied by the drug and no increase in response is observed if a higher concentration of drug is obtained. That means even if you try to increase the concentration of the drug after achieving the Emax, there is no increase in the effect. Therefore, the maximal response differs between the full and partial agonist even when 100% of the receptors are occupied by the drug. And similarly, even though an antagonist occupies 100% of the receptor sites, no receptor activation results and Emax is zero. Efficacy is more clinically useful characteristic than the drug potency since a drug with greater efficacy is more therapeutically beneficial than is one that is more potent. So if you observe here, we have got drug A, drug B and drug C with different AC50s. So here the drug A is more potent than drug B but both show the same efficacy. So understand, drug A is more potent than drug B but both show same efficacy. So what does that mean? It is That is the drug A is producing the 50% of the maximal effect at a dose lesser than that of drug B but the maximal effect produced by both the drugs are the same. Whereas drug C shows lower potency and lower efficacy than drug A and drug B. So that is all about the potency and efficacy. Next, we can talk about the effect of drug concentration on receptor binding. So, the quantitative relationship between the drug concentration and receptor occupancy applies a law of mass action to the kinetics of the binding of drug and receptor molecules. So, what is the law of mass action? It is the principle that the rate of a chemical reaction is proportional to the concentration of the reacting substances. So here when the drug binds to the receptor, it forms the drug receptor complex and that is directly proportional to the biological effect. So by making the assumption that the binding of one drug molecule does not alter the binding of subsequent molecules and applying the law of mass action, we can mathematically express the relationship between the percentage or the fraction of the bound receptors and the drug concentration. So here if you observe the D stands for the concentration of the free drug and DR stands for the concentration of the bound drug and the RT stands for the total concentration of the receptors and is equal to the sum of the concentrations of both the bound and unbound receptors and KD is the equilibrium dissociation constant for the drug from the receptor. So the value of KD can be used to determine the affinity of a drug for its receptor. The affinity usually describes the strength of the interaction that is the binding between the ligand and its receptor. So remember it is the dissociation constant. So the higher the KD value, the weaker will be the interaction and the lower the affinity and vice versa. So if you observe in this equation, a curve can be defined and has a shape of rectangular hyperbola. As the concentration of the free drug increases, the ratio of the concentrations of the bound receptors to total receptors approaches unity. The binding of the drug to its receptor initiates events that ultimately lead to a measurable biologic response. Thus, it is not surprising that the curve shown in the following figure and those representing the relationship between the dose and the effect are usually similar. Next, we are going to talk about the relationship of drug binding to pharmacologic effect. So, the mathematical model that describes the drug concentration and receptor binding can be applied to dose, drug concentration and response or the effect providing the following assumptions are met. So, what are the assumptions? The magnitude of the response is proportional to the amount of receptors bound or occupied. Then the Emax occurs when all receptors are bound and binding of the drug to the receptor exhibits no cooperativity. So now when we look into the mathematical formula, it consists of E, the effect of the drug at concentration D and E max is the maximal effect of the drug and KD is the equilibrium dissociation constant. So thus it follows that if a specific population of receptors is vital for mediating a physiological effect, 
the affinity of an agonist for binding to those receptors should be related to the potency of that drug for causing the physiological effect so remember the specificity of particular agonist to its receptor mainly depends upon the potency of that particular drug to produce the response it should be remember that many drugs and most neurotransmitters can bind to more than one type of receptor thereby causing both the desired therapeutic effects and undesired side effects because of this less specificity of these drugs where it can bind to more than one population of the receptors it can cause the desired therapeutic effects as well as the unwanted side effects so that is all about the graded dose response relationship and we'll be talking about the intrinsic activity one of the main sections coming under the pharmacodynamics in our coming video so i hope this is very clear and if there's any doubt in comments please do mail in us thank you Yeah. <laughs>